some athletes and sports scientists swear by extreme temperature training. Something high street gyms have gotten on to with hot yoga, climate controlled spin classes and ice baths. But is it all worth it? We've come to the University of South Wales Research Institute of Science and Health to find out. Morning, Damien. Good morning. Hi, nice Hello. to meet you. Professor Damien Bailey has worked with Olympic rowers, Arctic explorers, triathletes and professional cyclists. And what he's learned from them could benefit all of us. The holy grail is to try to slow the ageing process down. By exposing ourselves to some of these environmental extremes, we can improve our systems to potentially allow us to age more slowly, more effectively, I guess. Damien wants to show us how changes in environmental temperature and the type of workout we're doing will lead to very different physiological responses. OK, so here's the chamber. And just sit there. And then, Kate, if you just take a seat on the bike. He wants me to demonstrate that temperature helps determine how much power my muscles can produce. To do that, I have to pedal as hard as I can on this bike for 10 seconds in each temperature environment. Meanwhile, I'll be testing the way temperature affects me when I do an endurance exercise. I have to pedal this bike at the same power and cadence for 10 minutes each time. The wires hanging off me will record what's going on inside my body. Well done, Javid. Now, we're going to have a recovery for 30 minutes. We're going to heat the chamber up to 40 degrees centigrade, and then we're going to bring you back in. We're going to repeat everything just as we did. According to Damien's research, in this heat, I should feel a lot stronger. This is because the rate of metabolic reaction, the speed at which muscles break down fuel, doubles with every 10 degree increase in temperature. So if you want to bench press a PB, do it in a hot, sweaty gym. At 40 degrees, my muscles feel primed and ready for action. Note to your change of wardrobe. <laughs> it is freezing in here. <laughs> uh, why'd you get coats? <laughs> When it's cold, the body draws blood flow away from the skin towards vital organs like the lungs and brain. Oh. Taking it up there. And the rate of metabolic reaction slows down, meaning it'll be harder for Kate to produce as much power as before. Okay. <sighs> so, 303 watts. That's 37% less power than I generated in the heat. Very, very heavy legs. A few minutes later, I'm also finished. And stop. Well done. Oh, you done? Oh, yes. Give me on. that, give me that. Let While me hot, sweaty gyms may be great for strength exercises, for maximum anti-aging effect, it turns out that endurance exercise in the cold is the way to go. If you can get more blood to your brain, it governs all other function. Really? Yeah. So every organ system is a slave to the brain, if you like. OK. So here we've manipulated flow to the brain quite markedly. You can see in the hot condition, we've reduced blood flow mm -hmm. to the brain, and then we increase blood flow through the cold by 20%, and that reduces the age of the brain by about five years. There is a growing body of evidence that increasing blood flow to the brain wards off age-related illnesses like Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's disease, extending the optimal lifespan of the brain and delaying the aging process. Cold environment endurance training is not only brilliant for aerobic fitness, it also keeps the mind young. Anything you can do to increase blood flow to the brain, even when you're young, all the way through to when you're older, is going to help you live longer and a better quality of life. It's the golden nugget. What I'm hearing is, next cold snap, Kate, you and I are going for a jog, because we'll live longer. Don't shy away from jogging in Sub-Zero.